Hemingway speaking. This broadcast is coming to you through the courtesy of Hagen Hennessy, distiller the fine Scotch whiskey. Not a headache in a boatload. Uh, the horses are at the halfway mark. This is the most thrilling race ever held here. At the half, half the field come a cropper. Highland Fling the favourite is well out of the race. Samovar is in the lead and running well, but is hard pressed by an unexpected contender, Oliver Twist, who uh, seems to be giving him a dickens of a time. Uh, <laughs> pardon me, folks, if I seem a bit excited, but really this is thrilling. We're thundering down the home stretch. Just think, in a few seconds, some lucky holder of the grand prize ticket will win £150,000. winning number now. Ticket number 613282 is winner of the grand prize, £150,000. Whoever you are, wherever you are, Hagen Hennessy, makers of grand prize whiskies, congratulate you. Did you count the audience? No, but I will. It gives me great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to present Princess Mitzi and her gypsy band direct from Hamden.
What's going on here? Can't you see I'm in and you're out? Well, I thought I was the hot stuff around here. You was, but now you ain't. No, I'm a hot stuff now. Well, cool off. My golly, the way that girl can fiddle is something gorgeous. She's marvelous. Here is the Hungarian consul. Ah, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. O'Brien. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Shapiro. Good afternoon, Counselor. Mr. O'Brien. Yes? Here are the passports for you and Princess Mitzi on the steamship Australich. <laughs> Thank you. You will be sorry to lose her, no? No. Y yes. <clears throat> but it's the last time we'll ever risk a $50,000 bond guaranteeing an artist's safe return to her country. Especially a hot-blooded gypsy from Hungary. A contract with moral clauses, chaperones, and headaches. She's been a great responsibility. Yeah, never again. Even if she can play uh, five fiddles with one hand. <laughs> Missy is a princess. She just naturally looks like one. Get that harder cinched up. Keep your mind on the elephant. I don't want to interfere, but why why don't you tell Miss Missy you love her? Suppose she does make two or three thousand dollars a week and you only make fifty. Huh, what's money got to do with love? If I ever pulled a high yellow sugar plum from under a stampede of elephants, believe me, I'd capitalize on it. Don't go look at me, I ain't done nothing. I'm engaged to Pearl. <sighs> Miss Bill, you size like you had the puncture of the heart. Close your trap, I'll puncture you. Probably boiling over with gratitude. Yeah, she probably is grateful. Hmm. Might want to give me a present for saving her life. Maybe of a heart's love, huh? Yeah. Maybe a pair of socks. Yeah. And I'd give her a sock. Oh, Miss Bill, you talking about socking lady you send flowers to every day? Let me see. Yesterday it was orchestras. Today it was the gladiators. And maybe tomorrow it will be chrysanthemums. Hmm? Yes, you're yeah. right about that anime. But she doesn't know I'm the sap that sends them to her. Oh, uh -uh, you're gone now. This bed you just plastered with love. I'll plaster you in a minute. Miss Missy, he has never got played by Mr. Nominous. I do not want them. That man with no name. He's crazy. What do you call a boo? I bet you wouldn't say that it is her airplane, man. He's also what you call a note, a swell head, foolish. He sent you a bunch of airplanes, hey, you think there was a man mm. in beauty? Never. That to him. I tried to thank him for saving my life, and the only thing he said, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody? Yes, he said it was nothing. Don't mention it. Oh, well, he only meant... Here, step in this. He meant I do not amount to something. Who is he, the big head? Does he amount to something? Well, Egbert say he comes from a fine head southern family. I don't care where he comes from, but I would like to tell him where he can go. They're yelling for you out there. Go on with your encore. Encore? Mr. O'Brien, I won't go on. I won't. I won't. Now, now, Mitzi, you're not going to do this to your Uncle Charlie. Oh, yes, I would. But listen to that mob. Oh, I have other things to think of.
If he don't go with his elephant, what happens? He gets a fire, is it not so? Yes. Well, I won't go on. Give me a fire. But, Mitzi, I can't fire you. You're the whole show. See? I'm the whole show, and that big swole head won't even speak to me. Now, am I important? Oh. Don't worry, Miss O'Brien. I keep them handy. Just a dollar break away. Here's the real one. You go on. I'll get her there. Smart girl. Oh, honey. I know how it is, honey. Me, I'm such a big fool. Love's just awful when he can't get no action on it. I'll show him. Show him. that orchestra and a man let go of my finger exhale mr bill speak to her and i may cut it out come on unc yourself come on quit swelling will you say where did anna may get that wart that ain't no wart that's my chewing gum well, clean it off. Off it comes. Come on, enemy. Come on, there you is. Come on, inhale. Exhale, enemy. Inhale. Exhale, enemy. That's the baby. Inhale. Exhale. <laughs> there it is. It's <laughs> gone now. Come on. Down. Put it down. Put it down. And Anna May was almost as good as Miss Mitty. Oh, forget that, dame. Yeah, I'll bet you wish you could. If you had your way, you'd make a gigolo out of me. Well, they say it has high-class work. Get those ideas out of your head. Uh oh that just reminds me. Here, this come for you this morning. This morning? Yeah. Why, well, it's a cablegram. I believe it is. I'm rich, I'm rich. I can do what I want, I can have what I want, I can love who I want. Egbert, Egbert, your hunch was right! Woo! Oh, rich! Rich! Egbert, I'm rich! And Mr. Bill promised me 10%. Oh, man, we gonna do our stuff now. Rabbit foot, you finally made the grade. Let's go on and do our stuff. Hey, Bert, huh? where's the identification stub on the ticket? What, what stub? You know, the, the ticket we get the money with. Where is it? I, I can't think what I did with that. Oh, think, man. Oh. Think, think, man. Well, wait think. a minute. I can't think when you are shaking me. Let me jar my brain. I'll jar it for you. Oh, oh that did it. Where is it? It's with my birth certificate. Where's your birth certificate? In the kangaroo's pouch. Well, come on, I'll get it. You're getting somewhere. Now I'm going somewhere. <laughs> oh, I have killed. 
kill him. I have killed the man I love. Darling, have I killed you? If you have, it's the swellest death I've ever died. Kiss me again, honey. Oh, you make a joke of love. Oh, let me go! No, I won't. You're mine. Let me go. I hate you. I oh, no, hate you. No, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Go far away. Go away. Down that fiddle, put it down. Oh, honey, I love you. I'm dead. I'm nuts about you. I know how you feel. You poor kid, I bet you thought I was never going to give in. You big swell head. I'm so happy. Oh, Betsy, I love you. On the level. Gee, kid, I get all choked up. Love. You don't know what love is. If you did, it won't take you so long to tell me. Missy, that was just one of those things. I was nothing and you were something. Read this. Everything's changed now. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that great? Listen, gorgeous. What do you want to make you happy? Name it and it's yours. Oh, don't be silly. I don't want nothing except my Billy. Me. Oh. oh, that's what I want, and for a long, long time. Me too. Howdy, howdy, howdy! The luckiest boy in America, and the beautiful Gypsy Princess. Anna Mary, we're going to have a great big celebration here, big wedding. Mm -hmm. Just the best I've ever done. Brand new bottle of champagne. There you is. Thank you. Oh, turn around. Oh, Missy. Oh, Where is he? Where is my baby? Mr. O'Brien say he may be a little late, but he's on his way. You won't need a bone to hold her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, wasn't it all very sudden? <laughs> Not to me. When the princess busted Mr. Bill with that fiddle, I heard the wedding bells start to ring. <laughs> <laughs> me and Egbert's getting hitched in love now, too. I sure nervous. When Lily and I was married, she was as nervous as a bowl of jelly. <laughs> I wasn't so nervous until the preacher looked down at you and asked if I wanted it baptized. No wonder. He thought you were my old man. <laughs> Give me the bottle, Give me the bottle. That's the girl. Ah, oh, princess, you look so charming. Merci, Consul. You would be married without your father's permission, eh? I would be married without anybody's permission. You don't know my Billy. He is what you call a peep. <laughs> I do not know this Billy, but I know your father. But I protect. This cable is your father's consent. Is that wonderful? Oh, <laughs> does he know we have for home tonight? Everything is in a nice fix, princess. <laughs> ah, to the bride and groom. To the bride. Drink him up, Anna May. I always did want to see a pickled elephant. Has the bridegroom shown up? No. Abe's out looking for him. Did you find the bridegroom? I telephoned the police station, the receiving hospital, and even the fire department. And there's no sign of that bummer yet. After Mitzi consenting to a public wedding, this fathead don't even show up. Charlie, have you got an aspirin? No. All right. And when she finds out that he hasn't even phoned, I hate to think what's going to happen. What will we do? Tell Lady Godiva to ride her on the ring again. She's been around five times already. Well, then tell her to dismount and let the audience see the horse. Oh, stop Say, joking with Something's got to be done. Gentlemen, in the house days, is the groom not here yet? Don't worry, Senator. Senator? I mean, Counselor, the boy will show up all right. Uh, he's probably waiting for a streetcar. Why should he be waiting for streetcars? He's got plenty of money. Because he likes streetcars. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is no time to joke in. The ceremony must go on. The dignity of a gypsy kingdom is at the stake. Say, we've got things there. Fifty thousand dollars. Which is the least you stand to lose if that girl is not returned to her father safely married. There seems to be complications. No complications. Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, pa. Dynasties have fallen over smaller things than the jilting of a princess. <laughs> <laughs>
to see the luckiest boy in America marry the beautiful gypsy princess. Captain, if this wedding don't go on, O'Brien and Shapiro are ruined. You simply got to find that bridegroom. We're doing all we can. Every man in my department is working on the case. But you don't understand. There's 15,000 paid admissions out there to see this wedding. Listen to them. Hey, come on that wedding. What's the matter? My partner here has got convulsions. Hear him? Oh, yeah, partner. The show must go on. It's a fake. It's a fake. Please do something. The only clue we have, the bridegroom was last seen with a colored fellow getting in a cab with a strange looking man. You've already told me that. The man had a lot of money on him. In my opinion, it was a plain case of being taken for a ride. Oh. Mr. O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien. Oh, what did Missy say? <laughs> Miss Missy's heart's breaking. But for your sake, and to save the matinee, she'll go through with the make-believe wedding. Great, great, that's great, that's great, Pearl. Hey, hey, Joe, Joe! Yes, Mr. O'Brien? Get the fake bridegroom ready, Mitchie's gonna go through the wedding and tell him to step on it. Come on, come on. Oh, what can this be? Hello, hello? Uh, this is Detective McCarty speaking. Say, was the bridegroom wearing a silk hat, cutaway coat, striped trousers, spats, and with a colored fella? Yes, yes, that's him. Uh, just checking the description. Uh, haven't found him yet. Uh, come on. the big top in the land of make-believe we are about to witness a beautiful reality I certainly swell of you Mitzi to save this matinee from far away across the sea came this lovely princess bubbling over with youth and happiness there is only one thing missing to make her happiness complete. The bridegroom. Shh. That is the presence of her father, the king of the Romany gypsies. Look up, Mitzi's. Only make believe. I can go through with it. You're doing fine. We folks watch this romance bloom. Let me paint you a picture. Painting. The green hills of her native land. Raced with streams of laughing water. Fishing now. Say, I, I, I wonder what did happen to Mr. Bill. <laughs> I don't know about him, but if I wasn't sailing with Miss Mitzi on that boat tonight, I'd spend the rest of my life tracking down that elephant nurse. Oh, fickle woman, you, you, you don't know what worry is. Sporting you in Mr. O'Brien's shoes, taking a jilted gypsy back to that knife thrown tribe of hers. Come on, Pearl, we ain't never going to get these trunks on board that ship if you don't lay off that varnish. Oh, I'm just aging it a little. Well, it's old enough now. Breathe, brother, breathe. And now, ladies and gentlemen, after the ceremony, the ushers will pass among you with pictures of the Princess Mitzi in native costume for the small sum of a dime, ten cents. On with the wedding! Oh, I can't! I can't! Mitzi! Mitzi! Wait here! Why didn't you make a speech, you big stiff? Mitzi! Come back here! Radiogram. Ape 
Shapiro, Mount Sinai Hospital, Hoboken, New Jersey. Your dumb message received. You say you're having heart attacks. What do you suppose I'm having? With Mitzi threatening to jump overboard. And if she does, I will too. Stop. Better look into my life insurance policies. I dreamt of gypsy daggers again last night. Signed, Charles O'Brien. If it is seasick, Mr. Sue, try sipping a lemon. Ah, sip it yourself. Quit wearing your pretty head, Miss Mitzi. I'll find out from Ouija where Mr. Bill is. Ouija, why didn't Mr. Bill show up at the wedding? I don't want nothing. Does he still love her? There is only one thing missing to make her happiness come. Why don't you answer me, Ouija? Oh, Miss Mitzi's heart's broke. On with the wedding! Listen, Mitzi, wait here! Come on, tell her where he is now. I can't, I can't stand it! Miss Mitzi, stop! Stop! Haven't I got trouble enough without you trying this? Mr. O'Brien, my heart is breaking. But I'm going to tell my father. Don't worry about that. I'll explain everything to your father. You don't know my father. He's one big temper, and when he gets mad, he throws knives. Okay, Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Nimbane, the world's greatest hypnotist at your service. How do you like my entrance, huh? It's an old one, but it's sure fire for a faker. What do you mean, faker? Huh? All you hypnotists are, ain't you? Tall. Ten dollars I can hypnotize you, wise guy. You're on.
Well, I'm a cross-eyed baboon. What kind of dope did you squirt in that guy's kisser? That wasn't dope. That was a concentrator. Harmless, see? <laughs> I didn't smell anything. Neither did he. That's the trick. The subject expects to smell something, but doesn't. And while he's hunting for the smell, I get him. Can you hypnotize anybody? Well, no, not anybody. Just chump shoe. How can you tell a chump when you see one? Chumps always have a peculiar look in their eyes. Take you, for example. Hey, wait a minute. I may be a chump, but I ain't got no ten bucks to lose. Oh, too bad, too bad. No. Stand. No, no. Relax. 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 And don't forget your drum cues tonight, wise guy. Come on, Beans. Come on. Over. Hey, the girl. I mean, boy. Say, you were out. How do you feel? I feel all right. Have a look. for you. <laughs> it was a lucky break for us when we picked up those two chumps. Will you step into my taxi, said the spider to the fly. <laughs> oh. oh, very nice, very nice. That is a very funny story you are reading. <laughs> <laughs> This is Horace S. Limberley. This is the press speaking. We have just discovered that the checks you gave us are in a bank that has been closed for a year. I'm amazed. I shall tend to it before we land. Hello? This is Captain von Stromberg speaking. Oh, how do you do, Captain? I'm Professor Limberley, you know. I'm the headliner at the Seaman Sponge Show tonight. I never heard of you. You come to my office and explain yourself. 
Uh, I'll drop in later. No, 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 no. You come over here right away, or I send my men and bring you here. I'll come right away, Captain. Such a swindler, did you? Why am I here? Oh, such a thing. With all my drips, I ever took I nobody know. ever. But here, Betsy, don't cross your bridges until you come to them. I'll take care of her, don't you worry. What's the matter? Gee, I'm glad that's over. Somebody. He's on the boat. He's on the boat. I just saw him. Saw who? The rat who jilted the prayer. Maybe you can help me find him. I just saw him through a porthole. Porthole? And 150,000 pounds? Is this a gag? No, it's no gag. He's the winner of the Grand National Sweepstakes. Why, that's over half a million dollars. Play. Just a minute. What is this? Well, it's like this. You see, I'm in the circus business. And I imported a young girl from Hungary. I had to put up $50,000 bonds to ensure her safe return home, and he, <laughs> he ran out on her. <laughs> Filthy money in a few minutes, and I shall expect a public apology. That's the deal. My goodness, where are we? I don't know. Last thing I remember, we were trying to get a taxi cab to go to my way. It is ain't no taxi. Egbert, look! Leaping catfish, it's a flood. How do we get here? Come on. Let's find out what this is all about. Yeah, let's get out of here. about Missy, what's she gonna think? What was the name of that boat Missy and I was to sail on? The Ostrich. That's it, the Ostrich. Well, the first thing I've got to do is to radio Missy on the Ostrich and tell her... 
Egbert, look. Well, we're on the ostrich. We're on the ostrich? Yes! Doggone, we must be having nightmares. Mitzi! Mitzi! Opa! 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 Mitzi! Egbert! Sugar for it, baby. I've been looking. I've been looking all over the is a public park? This ain't no neck and grounds, you wall-eyed Romeo and style here. Mitzi! Mitzi! Billy! Mitzi! Billy, what happened? We'll go into that later. Let's finish this first. That can wait. This can. And then it all seemed like a dream. Oh, Edward. Tell me again that you love me. Oh, baby, you know there ain't no argument to that. And, and you didn't guilt me on purpose, did you? Did you? You didn't guilt me on purpose, did you? I'm your sugar foot, ain't I? Hear me, darling? You do love me, don't you? And you didn't jilt me at the altar on purpose, did you? Hmm? What business is that of yours? Edbert! Go away, woman! Come here. Sit down. Shoved you in the pool and disappeared. Yes. Say, there's something funny going on around here. You're telling me? Yeah, and I'm going to find out what it is. Maybe I'll be right back. Oh, no, let the sheep disappear again. Not while I'm conscious. Oh, I'm so happy. Billy came back. He loves me. A cold water can kill not love. Did you see Egbert? Say, what's the matter with you? You enjoy swimming? Very much. Enjoy yourself. Eddie, what did you know if I enjoyed swimming? Come here. Stand up. Walk. I have just told you a funny story. Laugh chumps. I come again. I get bored. Mr. O'Brien, there are no men answering your description on my ship. My men have searched every inch of the hold. <laughs> you must have hallucinations. Did they search the cabins? Ah, cabins. What would they be doing in the cabins? <laughs> they might be flying airplanes. What? <laughs> flying airplanes in the cabins? Hiding. Hiding. Yes. I never thought of that. Well, it's a thought. Don't stop. Cooperate with the O'Brien. Search every cabin. The more I have again. Search the ship. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Why, you poor little doggy. What? What is it? Oh dear, don't 
let it worry you. No, he is much better off where he is. Yes. Stuart, bring a bottle of wine to every table and a case for the brave uh, lion team, huh? Yeah, my dear. Yes, 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 yes. Here, yes. Yes. That is it, that is right. Thank you, sir. Oh, to Boris, Boris. Elle est de Montevideo, passa. Je connais ce Théo. Un long cibois, un long co. Elle est trop riche. Excuse me, please. What did you say? Do you understand Russian? No, no. Then that was Russian. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Help! The ship's doctor. Somebody, quick! Yes, my sir. Well, tell somebody. Get the doctor right quick. Schmidt, hold the support. Here's the two missing boys. Look. Stiff. But what holds them up? Hypnotism. Billy. Egbert. Egbert. Whatever it is, they've got it. Wake up. Wake up. Boys. Mr. O'Brien. What's happened to us? Well, you've been hypnotized. Take a look at this. Hypnotized? My goodness, look at me. I'm stiffnotized. Herr Kapin, uh, these are the two boys Mr. Brian was looking for. That's good. They were robbed. Robbed? Yes, robbed. We had over half a million dollars worth of checks and cash on us. What? A thief on my ship? Who is he? Horace S. Limberley. Horace S. Limberley? I'm afraid I cannot help you. Why not? Horace S. Limberley committed suicide at 5 o'clock. He joined the fishes. Committed suicide with all that going on? Oh, that's a lot of hooey. You know, there seems to be something crazy about this. What do you think, Boris? Crazy? I think you hit it. Too bad! Too bad! Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> 
next for you. By God, you hold me. Listen, listen. Oh, oh. I'm here, Salma. I'll have you put in jail. All right. I'll let go of me, will you? There's a typical masher, doesn't he, Lucas? Now, don't, don't go until he understands everything. But you see, I was taking a bath. Oh, oh, how long has this been going on? Oh, you don't understand. I was just about to take a bath when he came. I suppose he was looking for the plumber. No, 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 I'm looking for a hypnotist. Well, that is a new one. Oh, I'll never take you on another sea voyage. <laughs> Get in there. Get in there. Did you hear me? Get in there. Oh. Hey, Jake, Jake. Come on, I'm going to close the act for the box trick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Why don't you watch? Why don't you watch where you go? To give me my money. Shh. Don't shush me. I want my money. Okay, Joe. Here you go. Please, mister, come on, give me my money. Shut up, will you? What's that? Looks like a lion's tail. Oh, there couldn't be no lions around here. Must be a rope of some kind, huh? He's a lion. What next? Pretend you're not frightened. You pretend I can't. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Look at him. <laughs> Try to get out. Now watch. Don't run. Oh. I will if I can. <laughs> He's got me. He's only bluffing. So are we.
Listen, honey, I've just found out what it's all about. I don't want to hear it. Because you think we're going to be first to get to it. You're down to the fellow more sit down. We should be coming to the wrong fellow. I jump all over. I love you. That's the last insult. I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 honey. Mitzi. I hate you. Oh, Mitzi, I'm sorry. Mitzi. Oh, well, you're at last. At last I've got you two together. <laughs> what, what's the matter? He kicked me. He kicked you? Because he loved you. Oh, because she smacked me in the face. Tell him, yeah, fair. Oh, I Oh, Missy. Doro. Well, I'll try, but he, he doesn't look like a dump to me. <laughs> <laughs> Around here. Hmm? Can I help it if the ship is gone crazy? I tell you, as long as Captain von Stromberg is in command of this ship, there will be no monkey business. What's the matter with you? What are you staring at? situation. For the first time, I does. Well, baby, then let's get comfortable. Oh, tell me you love me, Egbert. Tell me you love me, Egbert. Tell me you love me. Well, does you love me or don't you? Baby, this ain't no time for loving. Quite in the same place. Rigid. Control yourself. Go away. Hey, boy, come here. Come here. Take a telegram, a radiogram to Abe Shapiro, Mount Sinai Hospital, Hoboken, New Jersey. Dear Abe, everything is okay now. Gonna be married tonight? What's that? All hands to your stations. Take care of you. Never 